Hey, what's going on, folks? This is Gion Talk Sports with special guest Daniel from Daniel and Gion Talk Shit. Say hi, Daniel. What's up? Uh, Daniel, uh, we're uh, <laughs> we're actually recording this one a little differently, not in my car uh, because we we just recorded another podcast. Um, and I figured Danny wanted to talk about baseball. And Carlos, close the window too. I, I can't. He kind of wanted to uh, close the window. Uh, he wanted to kind of incorporate the baseball playoffs, but it was just this didn't really fit with the topic. So we're recording another podcast the same night. But uh, anyways, uh, where we're at, this is uh, episode three, the first one that's going to be on SoundCloud. Um, Baseball playoffs are starting to wrap up. Uh, the only division... First round of the playoffs. The division series uh, game left is the Nats versus the Dodgers. The Giants, unfortunately, blew it last night. Uh, I have some thoughts about that. But, uh, Daniel, what are, what, are you, what are your thoughts about the uh, Cubs? Giants? Well, I want to talk shit about the Cubs. Because okay. Because I've read from a few people on Facebook. I'm not going to mention names, but it's more than one person that I've read about how Cubs are the best team in baseball and they're going to just tramp on everyone and they're the, basically the guaranteed World Series champs. Goodbye to the GOAT curse, 1908, no longer. It's going to be 2016. This is their year, blah, 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 right? Okay, that's ridiculous. Now, they have the best record in baseball for the, for the regular season and a few years ago, that would have meant something to me, but unfortunately, I met Gian and he's convinced me that the regular season doesn't mean shit. It doesn't. So, no, I, I agree now. Um, and my, I, if I had, if I could only say one thing to those Cubs fans and Cubs, fran, Cubs fans abroad who believe that, if they were that fucking great, where it was an automatic, they would have beat the Giants like the Blue Jays beat the Texas Rangers. Because the Blue Jays annihilated the Rangers. It was no fucking contest. I mean, if you listen to like the sports commentary around that time, but the analysts had to talk about those games... Obviously, they couldn't, like, really be for one team or the other. They have to keep it uniform and stuff. Right. It felt like they were fucking struggling to, like, give any hope for the Rangers. Right. I mean, they got fucking demolished. Yeah, no, they got destroyed. They got owned. The Giants did not get owned. No. They did not. They defeated themselves. Um, that first game. Did they win the first game? No. First, no. no, no, no. Well, who pitched the first game? Quite pitched. He pitched a complete game. Oh, I thought he pitched the second game. No, he pitched the first game. Okay, so, okay, all right, so then, because that's what I was going to go off of my launching point was Cueto. Cueto pitched a great game that game. Did one mistake pitch. And he got, and that's baseball. You fucking, you throw one mistake, and if your team doesn't hit, the Giants bats on that game were silent. Well, not only that, but they, they got hosed in the bottom of the ninth, too. One, well, but the game was already over. No, no, it was one nothing, and they got hosed. Like the, Yeah, the, the game was over because they weren't hitting. Well, yeah. Okay, let's backtrack. So, the leadoff hitter gets a walk. No, he thinks it's ball four, and he gets called out on a check swing. And if you watch the replay, terrible call. He checked his swing. Had he reached first base, Buster Posey came up next, hits a fucking double to the gap. He would have scored. I'm not disagreeing. He crushed with that. it. That would have tied the game. I'm not disagreeing with that, but it didn't happen. It didn't happen. You can't. You can't always rely on the ninth inning. Well, I'm saying, but that they kind they got kind of hosed there. Not to mention Bruce Bochy having uh, Nunez pinch hit when the guy can't run was a, a, was just a bad mistake. Like I don't even know why he's on the roster because he doesn't have power. It's not like a, a, a couple years ago we had Michael Morse. He wasn't. He had a pulled hammy. He couldn't run, but Michael Morse can crush the ball 500 feet. And right. Eduardo Nunez isn't that guy. So to have him pinch hit, like, he, I mean, maybe he was assuming, you know, Chapman throws 100 miles an hour, so maybe if he makes contact. It'll go somewhere. Yeah, it'll supply the power for him. Maybe that was a line of thinking. but Which I, it did, it, it happened for Gillespie for that for that game three win. Right, but that also, I think, I think Chapman is at his best when he, he elevates the ball. I think he's at his best when he's fucking closing a game out. No, in the ninth well, inning. Well, yeah, and not that, a two out I think, I think the the mentality changes as well for closers when they come in because I've known I've seen it like before. Casilla had his meltdown this year. He uh, was untouchable. And but whenever you brought him in during a tie game, he would blow it. Like his mentality, his because it wasn't it shutting wasn't the people same, down. No. But when it was like a save situation, it was like lights up. And I think maybe it's the same thing for Chapman. Although they did have the lead when they brought him in. 
Um, so it was a save opportunity, but maybe just coming in the eighth for two innings. Yeah. But not only that, but I'm saying he, he is at his best when he leaves the ball when the ball's up. So when he's throwing the high fastball, people can't touch it because it's already hard. The, the velocity makes it hard enough to hit, and the elevation of the ball makes, makes it even, even harder. harder. Yep. Um, uh, Monday night, the ball was he was leaving it down in the zone. It was belt high, and that's why they were able to rig him because they you know. And that was game three. That was game three. Game two, they just... I think game two is the one that they really just lost, right? Game two was also Bruce Bochy's fault. And let me tell you why it was Bruce Bochy's fault. Uh, what was the score in that game? Five to two. Was that the Chris Bryant home run day? day? No, Maybe. that was... I think it... One game they lost definitively. Maybe yeah, it, was it was game, game two. two. Okay, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, game yeah. two. And the reason why they lost that was because Bruce Bochy, the god in San Francisco, who I've had issues with for the past... Even... Call me a hater. Yes, he's been the manager for three world championships. Um, the last two seasons and parts of other seasons, even the last World Series we won, he's made some super questionable decisions, like dumb baseball decisions, where it just doesn't make sense to anyone. But because he won the World Series, you can't question him. You forget all about it. Yeah, you forget all about it. So he started Jeff Samarja. Um, Jeff Samarja's been getting ripped. His nickname is Samitball. He he st- oh, then I didn't watch game two at all then because I didn't I didn't even know Samarja started any game. Yeah, Is that Jeff Samarja started game two. Okay, I his last that. start in Chicago he lasted two innings because he gave up four runs in the first two innings. Well, deja fucking vu. He lasted two innings and gave up four runs in Chicago for whatever reason. We all watched the game last night. Matt Moore was fucking dealing. Why didn't you put him game two? It was a must win. It's a best of five series. It's not a best of seven. Yeah, if it's best of seven, I get it. You know, but it's just one game. It's a best of five. Every game is important. Every game is important. So game two, you got to put in more. Madison Bumgarner wasn't available, obviously. You got to put in more. Um, but then, okay, so like I said, I didn't watch game two, but game three, obviously the Giants won. Mad Bum did not pitch well. He was not postseason Mad Bum. He wasn't. He and if you look at his numbers, he is not as good at home in the playoffs. Yeah, they, they did bring reason. those numbers up. But he only gave up three runs. He lost the one game he lost last year was because it was at home. Right for that fucking throwing error. Not last year, two years ago, um, during the postseason, and it was at home. But but they won. The, my whole point. My whole point is they won because the Giants. Yes, they've had terrible, terrible bullpen problems the whole fucking year, but they could still hit the ball as long as they turn themselves on, quote unquote, right? And that game four proved it. And then, la- or not game four, it's game three, sorry. Game two is the one they watched. Game three, they won. Game four was last night. And they hit game four. Yeah. And they hit game four. What, with the exception, and so I, I stopped watching the game like seventh inning because I had to go, to, I went to the movies. And when I came back, Carlos, I had like 15 texts from Carlos with all like Matt Moore, like, you know, all his faces because I guess they fucking lost at the last minute because of bullpen issues. Well, and then here's, the, here's the controversy, and this is something that I, I wanted to touch on. I've been arguing with people on the internet about it. Um, game three, the Giants were up uh, five to three in the ninth. They and brought in Romo, and Romo blew it. He blew the safe, and they had to go next to innings, and they ended up winning the game. Great. Last night, uh, Tuesday, the, the day after, your pitcher is dealing. You already experienced what happened the night before. Why don't you let him finish the game? And people are saying, oh, he was at 120 pitches. Like, Fuck that. I don't give a shit about pitch counts. Me That's either. bullshit. There's no scientific correlation between pitch counts and injuries. If you're going to get hurt, you can get hurt throwing 10 pitches in a game. Yep. It, it is, it's bullshit. The reason why people get hurt is because... We're playing baseball year-round now when they weren't before, so people exactly. don't have enough time for their arms to heal. That's why Juan Marshall and fucking uh, Warren Spahn were able to throw fucking 16 innings each in the 60s versus now, like, seven innings, you're out of the game. Because they're starting. They Those two people probably were not playing at eight years old, travel ball, year-round, with, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, they were playing stick. You know, those kids were playing stick ball or baseball, whatever, Little League. And they were allowed football, time to basketball. heal. They were playing basketball and football. They weren't playing baseball year-round. No. And that's and that's a problem. There, there, There is a correlation between how much you throw and, you know, how it affects your body. But it's not your pitch count. It's how much you throw year-round, like you said. It's how much you let your body to heal itself, right? And so... 
pitch count is meaningless to me as well. Especially in the fucking playoffs. When it matters the most. Because at the end of the day, like I said, I left early, so I didn't know that he would reach the eighth inning. Uh, uh, Mike, what's his name? Michael? Morris? Matt Moore. Matt Moore. Matt Moore. Sorry. Um, but let him start the ninth inning. Because if he gets knocked, if he gets fucking two, gives up some hits or whatever, then you can take him. Well, the first guy he gives a hit up to is going to be yanked. Right. But at least give him the opportunity. Why Why not? not? Exactly. And then what I was saying to Carlos on the way over here, why not just bring in Mad Bum? Yeah, he did just pitch. But it's for fucking one inning. Yeah. Do you trust Mad Bum for one inning or the Giants bullpen? Serious question. No, absolutely. Who would you, if you had to pick one pitcher? I'll be completely honest. I would have brought in Cueto because Cueto. Why not? Cueto still got inning? the whole day. To, the next, it's going to be he had to throw that day anyways. Exactly. It's a so throwing just, day. It might as well just throw it. Just and because you know Cueto or Mad Bum have a better chance of shutting down that offense as opposed to the shitty fucking bullpen, which clearly Bochi was trying to avoid by even letting him fucking pitch over a hundred pitches. Right. Right. Even no matter how much you're dealing. You don't yank a pitcher unless you don't have anyone to replace him with. Right. When you get that high in terms of pitch count. Um, it's just like uh, Mad Bum, that for the, the game he pitched, the, the wild card game. Absolutely. He was way over, fucking way over. Oh, yeah, but he finished the fucking game. Because Bochi knew, if he probably pulled him, that there was a chance you're going to lose that fucking game. And they had to win. And I don't know I don't know where the mentality changed, where it did, it wasn't a must-win game anymore for him or something. And I've had, I've had people arguing, like, oh, well... You know, Moore's had uh, Tommy John surgery. He's got a history, you know. like He's a professional baseball th- player. Suck it up. Well, not just that, but it's like, you know, they have to think about the future. Not, no, you don't think about the fucking future. You think about the fucking playoffs and winning the fucking playoff game. That's the only future you need to worry about. You don't need to worry about next year. You worry about this year because this year's not over yet. It's yep. stupid. It's fucking ridiculous thinking. If that's your defense for Bruce Bochy, then you can go jump off a fucking cliff, dude, because you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Stop watching baseball because you don't know shit. And at the end of the day, motherfucker, if he if he blows his arm out, well, you know what? Sorry, but we're going to replace you anyway because everyone's replaceable unless your name is Madison Bumgarner, unless your name's Clayton Kershaw, unless your name's Johnny Cueto, Buster Posey. If you're fucking not one of these top guys, you're replaceable. Right? I mean, yeah, he might be young or whatever, but he, I'm sorry, but he's probably not going to ever turn into a mad bum. No. Where he's going to be a dominant ace. If he was, the Tampa Bay wouldn't have traded him, or they would have traded him for a lot more. They traded him for Matt fucking Duffy, which, I mean, Duffy's a nice, he's a nice complimentary piece, but it, it, it's... My whole thing is this. Assuming that, you know, my, my whole point is, is, is the Giants could have easily taken out the Cubs. No, they could have. And you know what? But but if we're gonna if, to you know the uh, devil's advocate here, the Giants are the toughest series the Cubs are gonna have because I don't if the Dodgers advance or if the if the Nats advance, I I see them blowing them out. I see them because they just the the Nationals and the Dodgers just don't they can't keep up pitching wise, pitching wise. The Nationals have Max Scherzer, they got nobody else. Um, the Dodgers have Clayton Kershaw, and you know how I feel about him in the playoffs. You know, he did not pitch bad. He pitched bad on game one. Did not pitch bad this last game. Okay, and so he did whose not fault pitch bad was the five year. earned runs? He gave up five earned runs yesterday. Whose fault was that? He gave up five earned runs. He didn't give up five. I mean, I guess yes, he did. he did. Okay, it's it's it's. I feel like that comes where you. So like that's semantics to me. And here's what, <laughs> no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Let me explain. Let me explain. <laughs> it's semantics to me. In the regards of, um, so here's what happened in that inning. He goes into the seventh inning. He didn't have 100 pitches yet, but he was pretty close. It was going to be his last inning regardless. Of course, Robert's going to let him pitch because why not? Even though records show after seventh inning in the playoffs, that's where Kershaw tanks, right? But he had been pitching good. He had been pitching Kershaw-like the whole game. Um, And um, gave up... Got two outs right away, gave up a single. Okay, pitchers give up singles. It's not a big deal. You and I both can agree a single's not going to kill any game, right? Um, but what happened is the next play, Worth, or no, Worth singled, and I don't know who, who the next batter was. He also singled. Danny Espinosa singled. He led off the inning. He singles. Oh, so then Worth singled. And he strikes out Severino. Someone fucking singled at some point. And Chris Halsey pinch hits. He hits, flies out to center field, so he's got two outs. 
There's another single there. Trey Turner singles. There you go. And that play, there was a play at second. They made a play at second, and he was just safe. It was a close play. He could have been out. It just there was a game of inches, and he just happened to beat the throw. No big deal. It's fucking baseball, right? Then he walks Bryce Harper, which you didn't see, but that was a battle right there. It was. It was. It just, you know, Bryce just won. He just beat Kershaw. It wasn't a four pitch walk. It was like a fucking twelve pitch at bat or something like that. I mean, see what you're doing is semanticizing. Hold on, hold on. Yes, at the end of the day, he walked him. Yes, okay, fine. He got taken out at that point. All right. But when you bring a reliever in, and the very next, the very fucking first pitch they do is beans a guy, that's not fucking Kershaw's fault that the dude can't fucking throw. I fucking loved Baez, but the last two postseasons in a row, just the last two years, my support for him is gone. I've I've championed Baez a lot, but now it's just gone because he just he's just that same fucking dude. I just can't trust him. But and then okay, and then so that's one run in. Right on Kershaw. Yeah, but he loaded the bases. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with that. And I get what you're. I, I get the point and you're trying Murphy to make. And then Murphy comes in and makes a single, I'm, and you, two two people score you on have that. A, you have a history because Roberts put in, in my opinion, should have put in Blanton, who had been lights or, out. Maybe should have put in Blanton, or maybe the second. Or maybe he should have. Or fought, or Kershaw maybe, should have tried to third or out. Maybe when Espinosa got the hit. Should have taken him he out. Should have taken him out Maybe, right there. But it, no, because he has a history of falling apart in the seventh he inning. He wasn't in falling apart though. He loaded the bases. That's falling apart. That's not falling apart. That is falling apart. No, you it's don't not. load the bases. It's baseball. Sometimes shit happens, and it seems to always happen to Kershaw. You're gonna tell in me the seventh you're inning. Gonna, you're gonna tell me that if Mad Bum was in the same fucking situation, same fucking situation, he did the pit. Everything was the same. Same pitch count. Everything like that. He wouldn't that. have got pulled out of the game. I know, oh, but you're, you're going to argue with me. Yeah, but to the difference is Mad Bum would have fucking got three outs. No, I'm not saying he would have got three outs. But I'm outs. just saying. What I'm saying you, is. If he was in the same situation, you're going to sit there and tell me that Mad Bum pitched a bad game. Uh, yeah. He Based loaded, on that. That, that whole left, situation. He loaded the bases in the seventh inning. Based on the same situation. The difference is, Bochy wouldn't have pulled out Mad Bum. He would have let him pitch out of his jam with a lead. One, because he trusted him. And two... Mad Bum doesn't have a history of imploding in the seventh fucking inning. I'm going on a game by game right basis now. Here. Like right now, when you get to the playoffs, Kershaw is not an ace pitcher anymore. He's an average pitcher to a bad well, pitcher. Well, last year he pitched good. He pitched better. He didn't pitch no, good. No, he pitched good. No, last he year. pitched better. Look at the record. Look they at his... pitch... I don't care about the record, Daniel. No, not the record. Where did look the fucking Dodgers go last year? Look at year? the stats. What happened? He lost the game. No, look at his stats. He pitched a better game. He what pitched, was his ERA? It was like 1.8. It was not 1.8. I'll bet you it was. It was that he gave up three runs it was to below, the fucking Cardinals. It was below. Well, they didn't play the Cardinals last year. Never. Who did they play last the year? The Mets. Well, he gave up three runs in a game. That's Just not a 1.8. Look it up. Keep going. My, my point is that, yes, he got fought. He fucking, the game was tied. But I don't blame him. Okay, he didn't pitch like Kenta Maeda the fucking day before, where he let off like fucking four runs in the second inning. He didn't pitch like Jeff Samarja. That's a bad game. That's a bad game to me. That, but you just you sound like a Kershaw sympathizer. No, I'll say the same thing about Mad Bum. When he when uh when did Mad Bum pitch a bad game on game three because he let off because he gave Jake Arrieta a three run home run? Yeah, no, he didn't I get past so. the fifth inning. He get, it was a bad game. I don't think it was. He I, got yanked in the fifth inning because he his stuff wasn't on that day. It wasn't. It was a bad start. Sure. He gave up a home run to a fucking pitcher. There's no that's no excuse. That's that's a bad start. Yeah, he could have fi- like, he could have finished the whole game. That's like arguing that that fucking when when uh. When bad bum homers, that everyone who pitches to him is a bad pitcher. Okay, bad bum is <laughs> they use him as a pinch hitter. I know Arietta is okay. also a good hitter. He's not. He's not fucking mad bum level. He's he's not. I fucking hate Jarek, Jake Arietta. He's trash. He's fucking trash. But I don't know. I guess we're just arguing. I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm defending my pitcher a little bit because he always gets a bad rap. And every situation isn't like, for example, the Cardinals. He had a two sixty three ERA. Two sixty okay. in two starts. Better than fucking. It wasn't under two. Okay, I'm wrong, but it wasn't over four Not or five. Close. It is fucking close. I mean, it's a good ERA, but it's still he lost. They the Dodgers lost that series for for because of one play. One play fucked them up for that one series, and that was when Daniel Murphy 
stole third base from first because there was no one covering because of the fucking shift. Okay. All I'm saying is when the game's on the line and you need to put someone on the bump, I, you, who you, are you going to go with? Well, I would have to go with Kershaw because he's the only one No, no. Have. If you could pick any pitcher, a postseason pitcher that's like not that's playing, an active pitcher, who would you go with? Think, give me five because Kershaw's not even in the top five. I would go with Kershaw. Then you're a fool. Not as my this number why, one. I'm talking this is about why top you, five. This is why you should never be I'm in ta- charge of the I'm baseball game. I'm talking about game. top five. If it's, saying, a play, if, the, if it's a playoff game. I wouldn't game, go for Dave. I wouldn't go for. I, okay. Top five. Uh, Cueto. Yes, Mad Bum. Yes, I would go with Kershaw. Okay. If I, I had I'd to pick put, five. I'd, I'd put Syndergaard pick, ahead of, of Kershaw. Sure. Syndergaard was great. I'm not. Syndergaard I'd was amazing. I'd put John Lester ahead of, of Kershaw. Mm, okay. I'm not. Okay. I'm not. I'm, that's not going to diminish. And me. we don't even know what Corey Kluber is going to do this year in his first postseason. Corey, to me, is hit and miss. He hasn't been in the playoffs before. I, I well, it's, okay, all right, and it's a different and environment. Fucking Cleveland, fucking boat raced the Red Sox. And I'm just going off of not just this year, but just in past history. Like, who would you go with? Wayne Wright. <laughs> Wayne Wright did not pitch good this year, though. No, not this year, but he pitched good last year and the year before. He was coming off an injury. But I'm saying, if you're going off a of history, Jose Fernandez. Rest in peace. <laughs> I would go with him though. He never pitched in a playoff game, so you don't know. What and he, he never will, done. so we'll never know. <laughs> it's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, so I get you know. There's that. I don't know. We're gonna see what happens tomorrow with the Dodgers. We'll see. I don't know who they're gonna pitch. Hopefully, they pitch Urias and not Hill. Um, Why well, would Hill was a much better pitcher pitcher than Urias to finish the season? Hill was arguably the Dodgers' best pitcher. He was in, the Dodgers' in, best pitcher. In September. Why would, why would you want Urias over Hill? Uh, well, Hill doesn't have any sort of track record on pitching on short rest. That's one thing. And if Urias gets in – Urias ended the season, his last seven starts was definitely below a two ERA. Um, same thing with this whip was low. Not overall, but, I mean, his last few starts were. Um, he pitches well against the Nationals specifically because the games he pitched against them – he did well. Um, and then, to be honest with it's you... A small sample size. To be honest with you, Hill goes out again, and I feel like... I think Hill's going to pitch tomorrow, truth be told, because I'm not Dave Roberts, but I know they're going to go with Hill tomorrow. I have a gut feeling they're going to get... They're going to knock... They're going to pounce on him again. Um, Hill was pitching great until he wasn't. <laughs> His first three innings, he had seven strikeouts, which is like a postseason record. And he was like, oh, fuck, we're, gonna, we're definitely going to stomp on these Nationals. Now, partly, I, honest to God, I really think that that fucking rain delay kind of fucked shit up, personally. Like, if we had played on Saturday, it might not have been... You think it killed the momentum? Because we had won the day before. That's yeah, but me. it was a close game the night before. It didn't have to be a close game. It wasn't a close game until it was, because we have fucking Kershaw on the mound. <laughs> I know, I know. He didn't have a good. I said that though. Bipolar I, arguments. I here. said, I well, I'm honest too. I still stick by my man, but I'm honest. If you're gonna pay, if, if you're gonna have one pitcher on your team year round, you can't just do postseason. W- would you pick Kershaw? Um, uh, you can't just put him in postseason, but it has to be year round. You mean the regular season instead of the playoffs? No, I'm saying the full year. If you were to sign a pitcher, would you not sign Kershaw? I would sign Kershaw now. If he was on the if he was on the market and you had the money, no. money wasn't it. You would you never. You would overpay for a guy who can't get it done in the postseason. That's no season. matter what, if you could fucking whatever, you can negotiate a fair rate for what you feel like. Yeah, he's no, worth. if 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 the Giants had a chance to sign Kershaw to be their number three starter, absolutely. Number three, <laughs> dude, Johnny Cueto and Madison Bumgarner have balls the size of fucking grapefruits in the playoffs. Kershaw has little fucking golf balls. That's, that's not entirely so true. Cueto did not peanuts. pitch that well for the Royals. With you know, he had one game that he pitched eight, but he wasn't he wasn't the Cueto in the playoffs last year. He's also coming off an injury. I love last Cueto year. though. I love Cueto, Cueto was hurt last year. I love Cueto. I have nothing. To I s- think I Cueto silenced all the doubters this year. Cueto's. I was never amazing. a doubter with Cueto. I love Cueto. I was really sad that the Dodgers didn't sign him, but uh, but I guess yeah. So uh, we'll see. I just fucking hate the Cubs. I don't care. Who wins the World Series? Personally, I, th- I think the Indians are going to win it. I, I, th- I think that it's the Indians' year. I think the Indians, and the reason why it's the Indians' year is because nobody's talking about them. 
and they're just dominating. And no, but they're dominating, and nobody's talking. They're the about underdogs, it. and they're but they're yeah. really the top yeah, dogs. Absolutely, they they're they have no stars on the team, and they're consistent. Though. Their whole team is like they're just like all solid. They're like the Royals, no stars on the team, but they're all good enough. They're, and I think a lot of people are like they're for whatever because the Cubs are getting so so much of the spotlight. You're not gonna see them coming. Like the the, the Blue Jays don't have any pitching. Um, they have pitchers, but not consistently throughout. They have uh, Sanchez. Is it Sanchez or that guy's terrible? No, who am I thinking of? Yeah, Aaron Sanchez. No, there's another one. There's one there's good. Aaron Sanchez is R. A. Dickey, who's garbage. No, 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 no. I had a, I had a fucking, I had a Blue Jays pitcher all year for fantasy. It was great. I don't Cap? Know. No, I don't. I don't. Sturm? Maybe, I don't know. Uh, I'd have to look. I, like, Estrada. I, maybe. Well, I think it was Estrada. Yeah, Estrada's meh. But anyway, they're not going to beat the fucking Indians. Is my point. Yeah, they might, but I, I don't. I don't think so. And I, 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 Indians is their year. And like I, I said, I don't think. It, I don't think the Dodgers or the <coughs> Nationals have what it takes to get past the Cubs. Um, we could beat the Cubs. Mm. We could beat the. We beat them in the in the regular season. What does that mean? That means we have the. We could beat yeah. them. Carlos just yawned. Not even on purpose. That was just the automatic reaction he got. Carlos is a hater. That's why. Yeah, I, and I mean, any given day, someone could win. But I don't. I just don't. I don't think the Dodgers are going to win tomorrow. Max Scherzer's pissed off. Well, me either. About that first. Game I don't think they're going to win either. I told Carlos. I told Carlos <laughs> that the Dodgers are going to win yesterday to give Dodger fans hope, so they can get fucking demolished at the home for the Nationals. But uh, no, that's. So we'll we'll see, but I just hope the Cubs don't win. At the end of the day, I don't fucking care who wins, just not the Cubs. All right. Anyone but the Cubs. Anyone but the Cubs. So final, uh, what's your prediction for, for what? this next series? Uh, the Dodgers are gonna win tomorrow. Uh, that's your prediction. So yeah. you just said they're not gonna win. I know, I know, because I want them to win. I gotta throw some good juju, I okay. guess. I think the Nats are gonna win tomorrow. So uh, do I. Um, really deep down inside, I really do. Uh, I don't think Kersh. I don't think. Uh, I don't think Scherzer's mm-hmm. gonna throw a gem though. You don't think so? No, I think that the on it. Okay, truly, 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 I think the Nationals are gonna win, but I don't think her, not on the back of uh, Scherzer. I think their offense is really gonna fucking solidify it. <clears throat> excuse me, to where to the point where even if it became a bullpen game for whatever reason, like Scherzer's throwing a lot of pitches or something like that, that they they can feel comfortable pull Scherzer like the fifth inning and still fucking win. You know what I mean? Right. Where it's not like a mad bum where. I'm going to pitch nine innings because we're fucking dominating and I want to fucking secure the victory. Like, I feel like the Nationals are going to comfortably beat the Dodgers tomorrow. Fair enough. Uh, but if for whatever, for whatever, whoever wins the series, I want them to win the, beat the Cubs. And well, obviously you want the Dodgers to go to the World Series. That'd be, that'd be nice. But if they're not, even if they go to the World Series, they're not going to beat the Indians. No, they don't have the pitching. They are not going to beat the Indians. The Nationals would not beat the Indians. No, definitely not. The Cubs and the Indians would be a good matchup, but styles just, make fights. I just feel like the Indians would. I just want to see fights. Period. Like I just want to see someone get beat up. All right, real quick, uh, USC football. Uh, I was going to talk about uh, Daniel. How do you feel about USC? I know you haven't been paying attention. I haven't watched really any of the games. Do they win last weekend? They did win. Uh, I was at the game. Um, They fumbled the ball f- three times, and uh, Sam Darnold threw another interception, and they won in spite of the four turnovers. Who won? USC. No, I mean, not who won. Sorry, what was the score? 21-17. They did not cover the spread, so my prediction was wrong. I said 38-30. Way lower scoring 21-17. game. 21-17? Uh, what, what was the rank of the other team? They were the 21st, I think, ranked team. USC's not ranked, right? Nope, still not ranked. Well, they're 3-3. Three and three. Yeah, they're not going to be ranked for the rest of the be, season. No, they'll be ranked if they if they win if they beat Washington. Is that uh, this next game? No, this next game is Arizona, and then after that is Cal. It's a Thursday night game, um, so I'm probably not going to go to that game. Um, but uh, USC left at least three touchdowns on the field. That game should have been a blowout. Sam Darnold uh, ran a ball and he fumbled. He got hit and fumbled. Who's that, that guy? That you're the quarterback, the new starting quarterback. Isn't is he, it? No, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, Max Brown is benched. They benched okay. him at the during the, for the Utah game, and he lost his job. He's not going to get it back. He's gonna what did he do him. during the Utah game besides lose? Sam Darnold. He the showed, other guy. Max, Max Brown, Brown didn't even play the Utah game. Oh, Sam Darnold's first start was a Utah game. I mean, the fucked up. I I I, I kid you not. If Sam Darnold had started the season <laughs> at quarterback, the USC would be five and one right now. 
because that first game they would have lost to Alabama, but they would have kind of seen what they have. He would have been able to grow with the offense, and I'm sure, I'm sure they would have beat Stanford. Stanford's not as good as this year as they have been in years past. Stanford's actually terrible. They they hate their defense. They have no. They have sec- a, did they play Stanford? Yeah, we lost 27-10. I was at that game too. You're fucking bad luck. Well, I got a two game win streak. <laughs> You're bad luck, but you were they at home? No, I was on the road. Yeah, so you have a bad road record then. Well, fair enough. I mean, Clay Helton is undefeated at home, believe it or not. So, I don't know. Uh, I guess my biggest concern right now is USC winning out and Clay Helton keeping his job a lot. I mean, it sounds fucked up to say, but... No, I, that's true. It's like it's like how if, if, if the Giants were to win the World Series, Bochy would be the manager next year if he wouldn't retire well, on top. Well, he's going to be the manager next year regardless. They're not going to get rid of him. There's... He's not catching the heat for that. Because he's God, that's why. Like you right. said earlier. Yeah, well, it, not only that, but the the in his defense, the Giants' bullpen was terrible, and that's not his fault. You know, that's that's on the general manager. He can't play for them. No, he can't. Well, and they don't have the arms. Romo's done. Uh, no more Jeremy Athel. He retired. Javier Lopez is done. Javier Lopez Dude, left-handers. Dude, how fucking old is him. your bullpen, though, for reals? Oh, I mean, uh, Romo's only like 29, 30. No, no, not the age-wise, but like in terms of like – these people, most of these people have been with the team for a fucking a long time, so right? The only guys left are Casilla from the, 2000, the 2010 team is Casilla, Trash, Romo, Trash, and Lopez. Mm-hmm. Don't know who that is. Lopez is the lefty specialist. Probably couldn't trash. get anybody probably. out. Yeah, probably Trash. Well, that, not, all three of those guys were key parts of the bullpens before. Yeah, six years ago when well, they Romo were was a closer younger. in 2012. Casilla was a closer in 2014. Um, but, yeah. They're just not – because he still has stuff. He's just it, mentally – Where was Pagan? I didn't gone. see him in the f- – uh, He got hurt for the last two games. Yeah, it was a hit shit anyways. Yeah, his back. And then he's done. They're not going to re-sign him. His, this is his last year. He's done. I mean, the the, giant, the team's going to look completely different. A lot of the pieces – He'll from, be a Dodger next year. Watch. <laughs> maybe. Because <laughs> we like to sign old Giants. Um, But, uh, shit, how do we go from USC to – I brought it up. I killed it. That's my <clears> fault. Yeah. You were saying that you it would the the fucking it's like a that's it's a bad silver lining that if the right 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 Trojans keep yeah because people are gonna defend Clay Helton and say he deserves a job but what they don't understand is when you watch the game you can see the talent you can see that USC is just more talented than the other team on the field you couldn't see that with Alabama because Alabama is one of the few teams that has more talent than than USC does you could see it the Stanford game that they blew. You could definitely see it the Utah game, which they blew, and you've seen it these last two games. ASU and uh, Colorado just can't compete athletically. So they're winning in spite of the coaches. And um, football, in my opinion, uh, football is probably one of the only sports in which the manager actually dictates what goes on. And what I mean by that is, like, yeah – in baseball, the manager is very important. Obviously, you've proved that with Bochi pitching certain pitchers at certain moments, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, a batter can still fucking ignore a call and blast a home run. Talent, or, talent it, trumps management in baseball. But in football, you're running plays that the coach is you're, telling you to your run. Your coaches are almost as important as and the so, players. And the players are basically guinea pigs. Yeah, you know, someone like Peyton Manning can call audibles on the field, right? And, you know, play call himself based on what he's seeing on the field, but not every quarterback at the college level Most, is Peyton Manning. None of them are. So, you know, if you have a bad coaching staff and you have a talented team, it's almost it's almost like a, a disservice to your team because they're being wasted. And what it comes down to is what do you want? Do you want a team that wins eight games, nine games, sometimes ten games a year? Or do you want a pro? I want championships. Exactly. And I think USC... <coughs> has been spoiled because of Pete Carroll, but we're it's the premier program on the West Coast. And it's the only program that could fit. If somehow we got USC and moved to the South, it would fit in. Championships are expected. That's all. It's like you it's need, like the Yankees, it's you, like the Dodgers, it's need, like the Lakers. It's exactly. Like, the, like if you don't go to the, if you don't win a championship that year, your season was a uh, a waste. It was a waste. Winning eight games is not cutting it. It's not even close. And, and if you were in, you know, I don't know teams. I don't, I don't know college football that well, but I'm sure if you were a, you know, some other lesser-known college and you won eight games, that might be the fucking greatest season no, in the abs- world. Absolutely. If Arizona, if Arizona wins eight games every season, their coach, Rich Rod, will not lose his job. Because that's amazing. Because that's a good season. Like, but they're happy lose, with that. You lose, you're USC coach. You lose eight games two seasons in a row. You're done. You're done. 
eight and four, it doesn't cut it, especially with the the talent that the school is able to get. It uh, another Bruce Feldman's a college football analyst, and he says straight up like. Jim Mora, UCLA's coach, did a press conference on, on uh, signing day for the recruits. They had just come off of beating USC three years in a row, and USC got the top five recruits that UCLA wanted. It's just like USC recruits itself. USC has, is the brand in Southern California, and Southern California is a bed for athletes. So it's just like... There's always going to be – there's never going to be a time where a kid says, I don't want to go to USC, you know, because it's like he's got pressure from his family. He's got pressure from, you know, just growing up watching it, like, you know. Those games are all nationally televised. Yeah. Whether, no matter how shitty USC is doing, those games will always be on national It's TV. like Notre Dame. Notre Dame sucks, and those games are all on fucking NBC or ABC, whatever. Always, forever. Um, it's just, just how it is. And I mean, it's like Ohio state, it's like Alabama, it's like Michigan. It's, uh, those are like the standard programs. Uh, so, so yeah. So back to whatever I was saying. Uh, yeah. So I'm kind of concerned that Clay Helton's going to win out. Like if he wins, cause I mean, the schedule got easier, you know, ASU is not good. Colorado is not that good. Um, Arizona is terrible. So that's going to be another win. Then they got Cal, who Cal could surprise you, but I don't see Cal beating SC either. They just don't have the horses. Then you get Washington. Washington's ranked number five. If he somehow beats Washington, then I almost have to support him because that game right now, in Washington, SC is a big-time dog. It's a big dog because that's the coach that they hired Sark over. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, Anyways, I don't know. It's going to be an interesting season. But, uh, and the 49ers still suck. 49ers still suck. Uh, so that's going to do it. The Rams are doing the 49ers. Right? Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Uh, the Rams are doing better than 49ers. Follow us at dngtalk.com. We'll get all the links to Stitcher, iTunes, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, yeah, somebody call me out, man. I haven't had one person call me out on sports yet. So uh, you guys suck. Uh, yeah. I'll call you out. Fuck. Everything's well, this just, is this is not a bay fucking sports. Well, talk. you just tried to call me out and you failed. Well, everything you talk about is the bay. Kershaw and fucking fans. USC. <laughs> Fuck. There's more fucking teams in the universe other than those. Well, I don't give a shit about any of those teams, so they don't exist. Well, I don't in care my about universe. any of the teams, but I mean, I'd like for you to at least talk about the Raiders occasionally. Oh, the you're Rams. a Raider fan now. The Rams, the Rams. Yeah, the Rams are Ram three. The, the Rams just got boat raced by the shitty ass Buffalo Bills. Wrong. Wrong. They didn't get boat race. No, I don't know. I don't fucking. Yeah. Watch that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's gonna do it. We'll we'll talk to you guys later. All right, guys. I'm out.